Hi, my name is Don Swanson, and I am the uh, writer and director of Occurrence of Mills Creek. We're currently running an Indiegogo campaign to raise funds to uh, make a feature film based on a short film, which certainly isn't anything new, but our approach is kind of unique to it in that our short film is in actuality the opening act of the feature film. Uh, all of this started back in 2016. I was working on another project with a young actress named Alexa Meckling, and she was being kind of hyper or whatever, and so I joked with her that if she didn't settle down, I was going to write a script where I slit her throat. And about a year and a half later, she asked me what was going on with that idea. And basically, at the time, we'd come off of that feature, had done another short project, and quite honestly, I was pretty tired. And I uh, was just looking to do something kind of fun uh, on a weekend where, you know, we could do some cool horror gore stuff. And uh, the idea that I kind of came up with was, what's the worst fate that a daughter could suffer? And in my mind, that would be uh, emotionally and physically and mentally tormented and betrayed by her mother. And so that's where the slashing of the throat came in and everything, this idea that a mom was messing with her daughter, kind of punishing her mentally and emotionally before actually taking the ultimate price of her life. And I uh, kind of worked on the script and got it to a pretty good point and uh, some other people became aware of it. And uh, that's how we landed Betsy Lynn George ultimately. And it was actually Betsy that suggested maybe it's the sister because she saw the mom as more of a caregiver. And as it kind of like took that direction, all these different threads started to grow out of it. And before long, um, I had so much kind of like backstory and possibilities for these characters that it was well beyond that base concept of a 10 minute kind of like character horror thriller piece uh, dealing with that moment before the daughter's death. And um, we kind of took off based on the people that were getting involved and everything. And we realized that there was so much more to the story, not just kind of like bulking up that bit, but that that was just like a chunk of a story. So kind of like went and restructured that a little bit to bring in a little um, more depth to some of the characters that were involved and uh, these ideas of where it could go, what it could all possibly mean. So as the short kind of came into focus, it became apparent that um, it was more psychological than horror and it was more family drama. And with that being the case, there was much more to tell than just that little bit. I have been involved on crowdfunding projects before, um, more in like a supportive kind of role. This is the first time that I've been the person responsible for it and in charge of it. But in both of those instances, we had something to show. Uh, one that I did with a collaborator, John Patrick Driscoll, in 2012, we had shot the short. We were seeking funds to complete it. And one that I uh, helped out with Tom Williams and Chris Lee, uh, we actually shot a very professional and very structured uh, concept trailer using who was going to be our talent and everything. And so from that experience, um, I learned that you want to have something to show, if at all possible. You know, you don't just want to get up there and be like, hi, I'm so-and-so and I got a great idea and you should give me money. Like, we wanted to actually show something. And also to kind of like see if it could potentially work. Uh, my initial plan was to let the short play the festival circuit for about six months or so to kind of build um, some buzz, some awareness and things like that and then go into the crowdfunding. But as it kept progressing, more and more people found out about it, more and more people wanted to be involved with it. And basically, we just kind of got into a place where uh, it would work against us to wait more so than it would help. And the way that it's structured is, the last scene of the short film is designed to work in two ways. Uh, literally just two or three shots change the entire scene. Uh, one version ends the short, you know, and it keeps it in that idea of more exploring kind of like a psychological um, illness and disillusionment. And the other one springboards it 
to what could be one or two years in the future. And it picks up again where the lead character, Clara, played by Ava Pesaurus, is actually working through the issues that she experiences in the short. So it's in that way, it's almost like a sequel to the short, but all told in one story. And so the short in and of itself explores these themes. It is a complete story. You know, it has the beginning, the middle, the end, and all that kind of thing. But it ends on a more ambiguous kind of like um, challenge you to think about reality kind of way. Whereas by tweaking that last scene, it gives us a springboard to jump into the future and basically see the effect that all of this had on Clara. And then it gives us even more fun to kind of play around with her in a psychological sense uh, because then we get to do all kinds of things where what's real and what wasn't real. Like what from the short actually happened? What from the short didn't actually happen? And her entire reality gets to be blurred. So whereas basically the short is centered around this idea of her dealing with guilt over the death of her sister, um, we take that and we just like run wild with it in the future. You know, like we begin to pick away her reality. We're able to like give her a life and then take it away from her. Uh, we're able to kind of like give some kind of uh, backstory, some kind of a depth to uh, her family because at the root of it, it really is about these three girls. And we're really able to get into those notions of family. And it's really cool because we are concentrating on these female characters specifically, you know, and we're looking at kind of mother-daughter relationships, sister relationships, and things like that. And we're adding that kind of like stress, that kind of like family dynamic, which is dramatic by nature, and we're putting it in a horror blanket, except we're kind of like playing with it psychologically. So basically, we set Clara up in the short, and then we just knock her all over the place in the feature. And we take all these ideas and we run with them further. And you know, we kind of complete that story. So uh, we are using the same footage. We are using the same actors. I mean, that was the plan once we started actually rolling on the short, you know, that this would be one quarter of the feature film. Uh, we're independent, very independent. We are ultra low budget. Uh, everybody who's working on this is working on it because it's a passion project of some sort. We all believe in what we're doing. And uh, ultimately, we don't have the luxury or the time to reshoot anything, really, you know? So uh, we were able to basically structure the opening act from the short film. Uh, so, yeah, Ava is still Clara, Betsy Lynn George is still Emily. Alex Meckling is still Cassandra. Uh, some other actors who appeared in the short are also coming back for the feature, including Joe Fischel as Victor, um, Emily's husband and the girl's father. Uh, Linda Marnoni, who worked with George Romero in the 70s on The uh, Crazies and Season of the Witch, is coming back as Anna Stell, along with some others. So yeah, all of the same actors, all of the same footage. You know, it is quite literally just like two or three shots in the last scene of the short that transitions. The short is, as stands, the opening to the feature with those few changes. So as I said before, um, my initial idea was to wait uh, six months to a year before going on with the feature, uh, but we had so many amazing opportunities kind of present themselves, uh, such as Mia Zanotti and other cast members, and just opportunities of places to shoot and interest. Uh, that it would actually hurt us to wait. So uh, the short film is being used as our ability to show we're more than just an idea. You know, we're doing this, we've done this, we've started this. Uh, and that's probably, from my personal experience in crowdfunding, um, the biggest piece of advice that I could give any filmmaker out there that's looking to do it um, on any level, but be more than just a talking head saying we've got this great idea. You know, like have something to show. Even if you've got to like rack up the credit card a little bit uh, to put together some kind of a concept trailer with the talent you hope to use, have something to show. So ultimately, the way it ended up playing out for us where we are, uh, the short film for us is our something to show. It's our start. It's our ability to say we're doing this. You know, it's not just an idea, it's something that actually is happening. And people can uh, 
get a sense of what we're about and what we're doing based off of that and then decide you know for themselves if they think we're worth supporting or not which of course i hope they do